Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gin Sense. Time to take a look at a fragrance that came out this year that pretty much nobody seems to care about. It's good old Tommy Hilfiger Impact Spark. This fragrance came in earlier today. I've been wearing it throughout the day. So now I'm gonna give you guys my first impressions on how this smells, how it wears, whether I like it or not, what my wife thinks about it. So let's jump into it. Let's check out Hilfiger Impact Spark. So this one I bought from Tommy Hilfiger's website. I got the 50 mil size right here, cost me $59, or you can get a 100 mil size, which is gonna run you 77. So not really expensive at full retail. And I feel like once it hits discounters, it should be available in that $35 range maybe. Let's go ahead and check out the presentation first, then we'll jump into the fragrance and cover that. So here is the box. On the front there, you have the name of the house, the name of the fragrance, the size and concentration. It's an eau de toilette concentration for this one. Got the name of the house on top of the box. Really nothing on the sides, nothing on the back. On the bottom, you have your ingredient information. And here we have the bottle. Mine's the 50 mil size, so I don't have the built-in travel atomizer in the cap. You have the name of the house, name of the fragrance right there on the front. This one is see-through. I like the look of it, looks good. On the bottom, you have a sticker with your badge code. My badge code, I think is BB1. It's kind of hard to see. And as always, I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys here. Here we go. It's okay, not great. So like I told you guys, the 50 mil does not have the built-in travel atomizer. I do have a 100 mil of the original impact right here. So you can see what I'm talking about. It's the whole kind of gimmick behind the impact fragrances. So within the cap right here, there's a small little tiny bottle of the fragrance. So essentially what you could do if you wanted to is you could take the cap off and throw it into your bag or your car or wherever and take it with you. And then when you wanted to, you just crack it open and reapply. So that's kind of cool, I guess. There are some minor issues with it. Well, first off, obviously it's a gimmick, but the travel spray here, it's really small. So if you did take this with any kind of regularity and you reapplied, you'd run out pretty quickly. And then I'm not sure where you'd go to get refills of that for your cap. It's a minor gripe, it's not really a big deal. I mean, ultimately they're giving you this much for free if you get the 100 mil, you could view it that way, uh, but that could be an issue, I guess. I myself have never taken the cap with me and, and refreshed through the day with that fragrance, but I'm sure some of you out there do. So the reason that I picked up Impact Spark is because a number of you guys out there requested me to pick this up and review it and let you know if it's any good. And I was interested in it anyway. I actually covered this uh, with a This Week in Fragrance video when it was first announced, uh, but then I went on the website, picked it up, and here we are. So Impact Spark, how does this one smell? Is it worth the 50 some odd bucks for a 50 mil size bottle? Should you wait for it and pick it up at discounters or just not worry about it at all? When you first spray it on, it's really fresh, smells nice. It harkens back to the original Impact so you can smell the similarity between the two if you're familiar with how this one smells. Get a good amount of citrus in the opening with kind of a green edge to it. There's a little hint of tartness. You can pick up the faintest amount of fig but not really too much of that. But I do think the opening smells very nice. I think the quality is pretty good for what you're probably expecting from Hilfiger. It's actually higher than most Tommy Hilfiger fragrances, period, as far as the quality goes. And it's really pleasant. Is it anything groundbreaking? Nah, it's not. But I do think it smells better than the original impact in the opening. There's a pretty big change as this one dries down on my skin. So when it heads into the mid, I actually pick up like this kind of, this is gonna sound weird, but kind of like a peppery cocktail kind of vibe. Now, the reason it makes me think of that is not that long ago, I went to Asheville, just a day trip. It's a small city in North Carolina, a really trendy place. And I went to a Mexican restaurant there and uh, had a heat wave cocktail. So I had like a habanero pepper in there, pepper, salt and stuff. It was pretty hot, at least as far as, cocktails go. This reminds me a little bit of how that smelled. Now that doesn't really sound good when you say, oh, this fragrance kind of reminds me of a habanero pepper cocktail, but it does, it smells good. If you've never had anything like that, then that probably wouldn't make too much sense to you, but it does come across as having like this, this hit of like a hot spiciness to it. Fresh and sweet, but with a bit of a hot spice in there. 
Officially, I think in the mid it has cardamom and green tea, uh, but it doesn't really come across to me much like green tea. So go figure. Even when I try to kind of stretch my mind and think, oh, maybe is that like green tea around the edges of the fragrance? I don't really get it myself. And I guess the name Spark to me makes more sense as that pop, that blast of, of almost heated pepper coming through. Because when you smell it, it's like, oof, wake you up for a second there. Now it still maintains that kind of, I hate to call it, but like generic uh, sweetness from the opening that carries over into the mid, but again, still smells really pleasant. Once you hit the dry down, like the far dry down after it's been on your skin for a couple hours, that kind of peppery feel that dies away. And what you're left with is more of just a, a very safe woody base, kind of like an ambroxany, clear wood, cedar kind of deal. You know, not too much going on there, but it smells decent, it smells nice. It's just nothing really exciting. I'd say the best part for me is that mid, which does last for a while in this fragrance. Like I said, it lasts two, three hours at least, but I really like that. It's pretty different actually. It's like impact with the big twist and that that pop, that, that liveliness, that zinginess that comes through in the mid, that really helps set this apart from the original impact. The original impact isn't bad. This is a decent day-to-day -day fragrance, especially if you pick it up for a good price. But Impact Spark is definitely more interesting to me. I like the little green nuance, the fig that's in there. The citrus smells nice, smells pleasant, fresh, clean, like an out of the shower fragrance. That mid, I really like. It's a little different. That twist, I think, improves things. And the dry down is just safe. You know, it's that kind of scent. That could be a dumb reach, but that little bit of intrigue that it has keeps you coming back. Is it the best of the Impact line? No, for me, that's still gonna be Impact Intense. I think that this is the one that I would have if I could have just one, but I do like Impact Spark more than the original Impact. Impact Intense, in case you're unaware, more of a sweet, spicy fragrance, more for fall and winter, and has a similarity to Parfums de Marley Layton. Impact Spark, is gonna be more of a spring summertime fragrance. You could pull it off during the fall as well, but it's gonna be mainly for spring and summer. And as far as daytime, nighttime use, leans daytime use for me. In terms of performance, it's fine. I would say average pretty much the whole way around. It has decent longevity, has decent projection, not great on either one of those. You know, it doesn't last eight plus hours off my skin, but it's not weak either. So it's that type of fragrance where for spring and summertime, it'll get the job done, no big deal. So on the whole, I don't regret the purchase. I think at full retail with this being a cheaper designer fragrance, it's not bad. It's worth checking out, especially if you like the line and doubly especially if you like the original impact, because like I said, I think it's a little more interesting than that, but you can draw the comparison between the two. Like you definitely know this is an impact scent is what I'm saying if you're familiar with the original and how that smells. Now, assuming that this hits discounters at some point, which eventually it should, even though it took Impact Intense forever to show up at any discounters, I think it'll be a really solid buy. It's gonna be one of those really nice cheapy fragrances that helps set you apart a little bit, like I said, during spring and summer. And when you can get this for about 35 bucks, if less, even better, but about 35 bucks, it'll be a really nice pickup. And then if you get the 100 ml size bottle, you get the stupid gimmick with the, the little travel spray in the cap, and then it's all the better. So Impact Spark is a really good release. I think the quality is good for the price that you pay here. It smells higher quality than pretty much anything else that Hilfiger is putting out right now. So even though Hilfiger is considered kind of a lower tier fragrance designer house, Impact is a good line. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me, Impact Spark surprisingly nice fragrance. Really dig this. If you smelled it, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thank you for hanging with me here today. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.